For example three of this chapter, uh, we're given a flow net around underneath this uh, uh, hydraulic structure. And uh, we know the hydraulic conductivity of soil. And we're going to calculate the total seepage loss per unit length and then the pore pressure at point A here. So this is basically a direct application of uh, flow net to solve a seepage problem. And um, for this given flow net, first, uh, the information we can get from this graph uh, includes the upstream water table. This is what we typically call H1. And then downstream water table, we call H2 here. And for this particular setup, the downstream water table is actually at the level of the ground surface. So this is your ground surface. And we're going to put the datum at this downstream water table. So we're going to put datum here for our calculation. So the total head loss, we call capital H, is H1 minus H2 and is basically 10 meters. And also, given this flow net, we can get the number of flow channels, we call it NF. And for this flow net, if we count this one, two, three, four, and five. So the number of flow channel NF is five. And then the number of equal potential drop, or a number of potential drop. So if we start from upstream, so that's Let's use uh, this bracket one here and two. So if you count three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. So there are a total of twelve potential drops from upstream to downstream. So ND is twelve. And then the potential drops between two adjacent equal potential lines. So that's basically one delta H, one delta H. So this delta H is capital H. That's the total loss from upstream to downstream over ND, number of potential drops. And this is, let's see, put plug-in numbers, 10 over 12, 0.833 meter. So that's what we can read directly from the graph and also that potential drop delta H we can calculate given this uh, flow net. And now let's calculate the total seepage loss per unit length and also pore pressure LA. Okay. Let me open a blank page here. So first for part one, we're going to calculate this small Q here. So for this flow net, uh, so all the flow net elements uh, have aspect ratio or have uh, has a ratio of length to width of one. So this, they're all approximate square elements. So Q, we can use this equation here, K times H over ND times NF. Okay. So that's for flow net with uh, square elements. So unless otherwise stated in the problem, uh, we can assume this um, L over B value is one. So we can use this uh, equation for square elements. So this is 0 0.002. And this is centimeter per second. So I'm going to convert that to meter per second. So this is from centimeter to meter conversion factor. Then H is 10. ND, we counted is 12. And NF is five. So if you plug in numbers, you get 8.33 times 10 to negative five meter cube per second per unit length meter. And then you can convert this to meter cube per day per meter. So that's 7.2 meter cube per day per meter. So that's part one, the seepage quantity per unit length. And then for part B, part two, so we want to know the pore pressure at A. So we want to know UA or capital A here. Okay. Uh, so just as what we did for uh, in example two, 
And for to determine the pore pressure, the water pressure at A, we need to know the total head at A. So let's look at this uh, graph here. Um, so when water travels from upstream to point A, so let's count how many potential drops water experiences. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. So in total, water experiences ten potential drops from upstream to point A. So remember, each time you cross a equal potential line, the total head is lost by delta H. So you have one potential drop. So then for point A, so at point A, um, so water experience is 10 equal potential drops, 10 delta H. So that's counted from upstream. So then the total head at A, we call H A, is the initial head in the water at upstream, we call H1, minus the head loss. So that's 10 delta H. And the initial head at upstream is 10 meters above the datum, the reference datum at the ground surface, minus 10 times delta H, which we calculated is 0.833 meters, 0.833. And then the total head at A is 1.67 meter. This is above, or say with respect to ground surface. So ground surface is our data. And then the elevation head is ZA. And ZA is something, again, you read directly from the graph. So you are given this scale, so that's 10 meters. So you are given this scale, then you can read directly from the graph. So this lens here, this is approximately 13 meters. Okay. And it's below the ground surface. So ZA is negative 13. And then the pressure at A, we call UA or let's use capital A here to be consistent. UA is unit weight of water times HA minus ZA. And if you plug in numbers here, unit weight of water 9.81 times HA is 1.67 minus negative 13, so it's plus 13. And this gives us 144 kilonewton per meter square.